Mention Mississippi. And you think of things like this. Or this. Or even this. Then sprinkle in a bit of hate. Heartache. Segregation. You get the picture. For those of you who have walked hand in hand with me through the stress, through the turmoil, through my period of hatred of my native state, of coming out of that dark veil into one of light and sunshine, warmth, and belief that Mississippi is not all that people think that it is. Of course, we've changed since then. Never before has my state, or really the South, had the capacity to tell that true story in a tangible and visceral way, until now. On the morning of December 9, 2017, the Mississippi Civil Rights Museum had its grand opening. Two buildings joined together as one. As Merle Evers put it, it hardly ever snows in Mississippi. The state hadn't seen this much snow in decades. The people of Mississippi thought the state had frozen over. But on this historic day, the people of the world were thinking hell had frozen over. As people from all corners of the globe watched live on CNN and local news channels, Mississippi made peace with our past, both races together as one. When I first heard of the concept of two museums, I immediately thought, are we going back to our old practices? Are we having two separate but possible equal museums? Yes, my suspicions have been there, and I have had to fight them. Fight them as I have loved the state of my birth, where I have and do love the state and all of the promises that it gives to its citizens. There were two museums joined by steps, but each had a different role, and they were both here on Mississippi ground. One of the greatest impacts uh, that I think the museum has had on me and, and my kids is that uh, the, on, on every pillar in there, they have uh, a chronological thing of people being lynched. And I was aware of how people were being lynched and, and the frequency of it. Not everything was harmony as it seems today in Mississippi. Frank Wilson, one of the people we were fortunate enough to speak with, shed some light on what it was really like living as a child back in the days of segregation. Yes, uh, some of the things I've seen and experienced as being a black person in Mississippi uh, started in the early 60s when I was like about uh, nine, 10 years old uh, during the height of the civil rights movement, which was the early 60s. Uh, I can remember when uh, Freedom Summer was coming up and Freedom Summer was the time when the uh, Freedom Riders were supposed to be coming to Mississippi to help in the registration of uh, black people to, to vote, and he refused to allow them to come into Mississippi. So it was a, like a boiling point when they got here. I lived with my auntie, and we stayed probably about mm, two blocks from the school, so I would always walk to school. Well, at that time, my auntie came to pick me up because of the uh, stuff that was about to happen. And of course, we and she had to walk through dogs and stuff, and they kind of uh, 
put the dogs on us and they didn't actually bite us, but they just used the dogs to kind of, you know, shove us away and we were just trying to get home. Even the fair, a placement for fun and enjoyment, was unfairly segregated in those days. The state fair is always, I think, the the first or the second uh, uh, Wednesday or Tuesday in the, from month of October, and it goes for two weeks. Well, back then, when I was growing up, is that it was still the same time frame, but blacks was not allowed to go to the fair except for the last three days. Not only was segregation hard enough during this period, but America lost three essential leaders who were part of the fight against it. During that time, uh, there was the assassination of uh, Martin Luther King, assassination of uh, Robert Kennedy, Robert Kennedy and John F. Kennedy. And so that was like our black hope then. So that caused a lot of uh, trials and tribulation uh, back then. As a matter of fact, I, I live two neighborhoods over uh, from, from Guyon Street. And Guyon Street is where Mega Everest lived. And I had an auntie that lived on Guyon Street, which is right up the street from Mega Everest. And uh, that night, that particular night, I remember uh, we had just came home and, and uh, then we just saw all the police cars, you know, just going and then just going there. Well, ah, what, what's going on? You know, went to bed the next morning to come find out that uh, Mega Everett has been, had been assassinated. You've got your museum here. Why do you have a museum here? Because it's important that we keep up with our history, that our young people who are coming behind us will know what happened in our town, in our state, and in our city. And unless we have a good knowledge base as to what it takes to make a good citizen in order to keep the town going as it should go, if everybody goes off in his own direction, then nothing really happens that's positive. If you go back to that movie, Roger and Hammerstein, it says that you've got to be taught to hate and fear. You've got to be taught from year to year. And somebody has to instill that in a child without saying, look, we are all God's children. We are made of one blood. That's what he said. Now, that's what the Bible said. And out of all of the medical stuff we have, we haven't found any blood, any other color other than red help. Today, Mississippi is continually learning from their mistakes and ever-changing. And that's why we've brought this museum to light. As George Santayana says, those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. So that's what we're doing. We're remembering the past in hopes that a future Mississippi will be a better Mississippi than even the one it is today. Stand tall. Be a Mississippian. Stand tall, be an American. Stand tall in the belief that we have justice, equality, regardless of race, creed, or color. So I employ upon you, visit these institutions, learn about the state of Mississippi, learn about those who cared enough to put their lives on the line. Learn, give, go. And in the songs that we have sung so often, go tell it on the mountain that Mississippi has two museums linked together in love in hope and in justice. Thank you.